What is an inverted yield curve and why should you care? If you don't know, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to make it super easy for you to understand today in today's video. But first, I want to say that I believe something great is going to happen for you today. And now on with the video. You may be hearing in the news about an inverted yield curve or economists might be mentioning an inverted yield curve and you may not know what that means so i'm going to explain that to you today so you will be in the know i want to remind you that nothing that i'm giving is economic financial accounting legal or any other kind of advice it is merely for it for educational purposes so that you will know what the terms are uh, that the that the economists and the bankers and such are using. Before we talk about the inverted yield curve, which is unusual, let's talk about a normal yield curve so you can understand what that is and then how that compares. This is uh, an example of a yield curve that I got from Investopedia. That's a wonderful website that I highly recommend to get information about financial terms mark it's a good place to start if you are not sure of what something means or how something works this is a graphic representation of the yields of bonds now bonds are debt instruments in other words some entity is borrowing money so they are issuing bonds as evidence of that debt and investors are purchasing the bonds at a particular price and those bonds will then mature at a certain date they will pay a certain interest rate Usually there's a face value listed on the bond and that would be the amount you'd expect to get paid however that face value may not reflect what would be called market interest rates the market interest rates float the supply and demand of those bonds and how investors look at the risk and long-term interest rates and many other factors that are involved but in general we're going to be talking about bonds graphed on a yield curve and they would be several several bonds could be multiple bonds and with the various maturity dates so along the x-axis here we're looking at maturity dates so they would be you know, maybe it's a one month bond, maybe it's a th three year bond, maybe it's going out here. The further out we go, the longer the term of the maturity. Maybe it's a 10 year bond, maybe it's even a 30 year bond because it could be, you know, 30 year bonds. So that would be way out here on here. So this is closer to the date that we're looking at, and this is further away. The yield is simply the interest rate. So the interest rate that the bond is expected to pay based upon the purchase price of the bond. Now I did a prior video showing how, how the purchase price of the bond is impacted by interest rates. You didn't see that video, I've linked it up here for you. Take a look at that to get a better understanding of that. But the yield, in other words, the interest rate that the bond is actually going to pay, which may or may not be the same as the face value of the bond, this is determined by investors and what they're willing to pay for the bond. The higher the price someone is willing to pay for the bond, the lower the interest rate. It's an inverse relationship. The interest rates go up relative to the price to the interest rate promised in the bond, then the price of the bond is going to go down because people aren't willing to pay the full face value of the bond if it's not going to pay the market interest rate. Likewise, the face value of the bond, if it is higher than the market interest rate, then people will pay a premium for the bond. They'll pay extra for the bond because it's going to pay a higher interest rate than they can get in the market. So that's an inverse relationship. And this here is a normal yield curve. The, th the way it works is the further out in time we go, and these bonds that are represented here with various maturity dates, they're all of similar credit risk. So there's not a credit 
differential here. All we have is a time value of money differential and what the interest rates are expected to do. So in general, you would expect the yield or the interest rate that a bond would pay would go up over time. In other words, the longer term bonds would generally have a higher interest rate than shorter term bonds. And that is because of that opportunity cost, right? If a person can get their money back right away, there's not as much risk, but if they have to wait 30 years to get their money back, they want to get, they want to get a higher interest rate because there may be other investments they could take on at that time. There may be other things they could do with the money over the time. So if they have to wait a longer period of time for their money, they're going to expect a higher interest rate for that or a higher yield. That is under normal circumstances. If you are in a circumstance where you've got an inverted yield curve, it would look like this. And again, this is from Investopedia. And it's showing you that again, time goes out this way and yield is on the y-axis. This is an unusual situation because it is showing you that as maturity goes out, as we get further and further out from today's date, the expected interest rates are going down. In other words, the long-term interest rates are lower than the short-term interest rates. And that is an indication that investors, bond investors at least, expect the long-term interest rates to decline over time. So they expect the interest rates down the road to be lower than they are today. So we're paying a higher rate today, or they expect a higher rate today, and expect the rates to go down in the future. And that is what the, uh, the inverted yield curve is showing. Now, why is that important? Why does that matter? Well, one reason it matters is because this is sometimes indicating that we might be entering a recession. Now, if you think we're already in a recession, go ahead and put that down in the comments below. There are many people. What we have here is if we have an inverted yield curve, that might indicate that we are headed into a recession. So you want to take a look at the yield curve and see what that yield curve looks like. Let's take a look at those bond numbers in today's latest bonds. This is what the yield curve is looking like uh, as of this morning. I'm looking at the U.S. Department of Treasury's reported interest rates for its bonds. And I'm choosing the treasury bonds because these are generally considered to be risk-free. They are the only risk, there is not a risk that they will not be repaid unless there's a default on the debt ceiling. So if there is a default, then these might not get paid back. But in the past, they've been paid. So this is considered one of the least risky investments that you can make. And again, this is not financial advice. This is for educational purposes only. So we're looking at the treasury yield curve because it's probably the cleanest one to look at because we've got the same debtor on the other side. It's the U.S. Treasury. They're borrowing money from investors. And again, the U.S. Treasury cannot exactly control this directly, what the interest rates are, because it's what the investors are willing to purchase the bonds at and that determines the interest rate so we're going to scroll down and we're going to take a look at what the interest rates are and the latest we have is for may 12 2023 and these again across here we have the dates and then the lengths of the bonds Everything from a one month bond, two month, three month, all the way on up to a 30 year bond. This is indicating that the interest rate on a one month bond as of Friday, May 12, 2023, is 5.79%. 5.79% for one month. That is, the US government borrowing money for one month is going to pay 5.79%. If uh, that sort of treasury bond is purchased. If it's two month, the interest rate goes down. 
it goes back up slightly for three months, however, is still lower than the one month bond goes up a little bit more for the four-month bond, but still below the one-month bond, starts trending downward for six months. For one year, it's down significantly. It's down more than a point for the one-year bond. Two-year bond, it drops uh, almost another point, not quite, and definitely down a second point for the three-year bond. So you see the interest rates are dropping five-year drops even more stays the same for the seven-year goes up just a hair for the 10-year a little bit more for the 20-year and back down a little bit for the 30-year but if you compare the 30-year bond to the one-month bond what do we see put it down in the comments if you see it yes the long-term interest rates are significantly lower than the short-term interest rates. Some economists might think that that indicates an upcoming recession. What do you think? Do you think that we're going into a recession? Put it down in the comments. If it is so, you need to prepare yourself for one. Prepare yourself, get out of debt, make sure you have good employment, stay employed, Make sure you're out of debt. Make sure you have an emergency fund. Make sure you have money put aside and understand what's happening in the markets. Don't panic. We have been through many recessions in the past. They're cyclical. They will we'll come out of it eventually, but you do need to make sure you're prepared for it. If that is what's happening, that would be if we follow the yield curve. If you found this interesting, Go ahead and give this a thumbs up. And if you want to get more information such as this, please sign up for my free newsletter at askprofessorcapco.com and subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.